I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. I'm not quite sure what's in this bag. I know that it's a looking glass, Chippendale style. I'd say 20 years ago I was in a woman's basement. I was doing work for her. She was moving from her home, getting rid of a lot of stuff. She handed me this bag and said, would you like this? I never really looked in the bag. I said, sure. I could see that it looked interesting. I pulled it out of the storage room. It had been in the barn. Let's see what it is. Well, this is going to be fun. The back is uh, one piece of pine. It appears to have circular saw marks in it. The nails are modern wire nails. I was looking forward to seeing if the glass was old, but uh, it's not. Little splits like this can happen during disassembly. Of course, this was already broken, but the eye bolt was so close to the edge, which may be why this fell off the wall and got broken, if that's what happened to it. The important thing is to get these glued back right away. I think I'll start with the top here. and. I'm going to remove these glue blocks and this lower piece. Be easier to clamp it and then I'm going to replace these blocks with larger blocks that will go across that break and help support it.
All right, now uh, on to the bottom section. All right, let's uh, see what we got.
All right, uh, get these clamps off and uh, start gluing them up again. Alright, let's uh, see how this piece did, and then I have a lot more uh, small pieces to glue on. Okay, hey, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Boy, everything seems really strong. This is good. All right, now I'm going to uh, strip the finish.
after the uh, treatment I gave it of oxalic acid, I last night I rinsed it off with clear water. It's dried overnight. Now I have a lot of sanding to do. I'll start with uh, 150 sandpaper just by hand. See if that uh, gets me where I want to be. I did have to switch to a block and even some 100 grit paper for some areas like this area that was so badly damaged. You know I like to keep sanding to a minimum. I like to save as much as I can, but this air this is a good example. This was a this was previously repaired, cracked again. I glued it. Despite my best efforts, it's not perfectly flat across here. Uh, so that's why the block and the hunter grit, I'm trying to take this down evenly. You can't just take a piece of sandpaper on your finger and go like that. That's the whole problem from the last person, there's, a, there's kind of a groove there, and I'm trying to get it out. And once I have this, I think I've got it as much as I dare. I do sand it uh, really well with 150. Alright, I've sanded everything with uh, 220 really well, and so I'm ready to give it its first coat of shellac. I'm going to spray uh, both sides of this frame with shellac. Uh, I'm spraying it because it's the most efficient way to do it. Uh, and although I'm using shellac that I mixed from flakes, uh, this you can readily buy, it's very good stuff. Okay, looks good. Looks really good. Yeah, we do have some color uh, issues we need to work out here. You can see that this board looks lighter. Uh, this piece of wood looks lighter. But what's happening, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but as you rotate it around, those colors can change. Okay, this, uh, <clears throat> this tells a different story, seeing it in this position. Hanging in its proper position here, everything's changed. This was the lightest little wing. Now, that's the darkest. These three are lighter. This wing actually matches this nice piece of mahogany well. This, I wish there was more contrast here but there's not much I can do about that. And the top crest doesn't look nearly as light. So I'm going to uh, sand the shellac, then I'm going to do some taping off, and I'm going to tone these three pieces and the crest uh, just a little bit with some aerosol. After two coats of shellac, I mean, you can see how grainy the wood is. In other words, the finish is soaked in. You can really see the grain. What I'm trying to do here is sand as much as possible. Ultimately, I'd like to level that off. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but I'm sanding as much of that shellac off the surface as I can. I want the thinnest coat possible. 
and hopefully begin to fill in that grain. For toning, I'm using this uh, Mohawk, I believe it's acrylic lacquer, medium brown walnut. Okay, this is uh, dried for about an hour. I'm going to take the tape off and uh, see if I can tell what it looks like. Of course, it's hard to tell at first with you know all these areas being sanded. Yeah, we'll wipe it off with a little paint thinner. Yeah, that looks good. I'll uh, give it a coat of shellac. Then we'll really be able to see what it looks like. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's uh it's looking really good. Yeah, with each coat it just looked better and better. All right, I want to give this uh a quick rub out. You can see all the texture and the open grain. You know, in other words, the finish feels very smooth here, but it's got a lot of open grain, a lot of shiny spots, and the steel wool, you know, it's like you're abrading it, like with sandpaper, but it's taking it down, and my goal is to minimize, to get rid of all those shiny spots. I won't get rid of them completely. Uh, it would take a few more coats of shellac to do that, but really cutting them down getting rid of 90% of them at least. So now I'm going to rub it again with the same 4 aught steel wool, but I'm going to lubricate the steel wool with Howard's Feed and Wax Polish, to which I'm going to add just a pinch of pumice. A box of pumice lasts a long time. I think that's going to look good. Well, there you have it. A nice Chippendale style mirror, uh, solid mahogany. It's a 20th century reproduction. Uh, it looks like it was handmade though. The, the carving, you know, the scroll work was a little coarse. But uh, I got it out of the basement of a house that was being sold. This would definitely not have survived to clean out. It was horrible looking and, uh, and busted up. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. I've got 14 hours in this job. 
I think seven of those were sanding alone. Uh, I use these tools and materials. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, feel free to share it. I'd really appreciate it.